Quiet, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers? There is additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Can we close the doors, please? May everyone have their seat? May we come to order? Everyone, please find the seat, those in the back. There's plenty of seats. Thank you. Shh. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Barron, Borelli, Cabrera, here, Chin, here, Cohen, here, Constantinides, Carnegie, <clears throat> Crowley, Combo, Deutsch, here, Drum, here. Espinal, Eugene, Ferreris Copeland, Garodnik, here, Gentili, here, Gibson, here, Greenfield, Borelli, here, Gradenchik, how are you, Johnson, here. Kalos. Hello, how are you doing? King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman. Lander. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Eugene. Yeah. Mendez. Miller. Present. Palma. Perkins. Aquí. Aquí. Oh, I like Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Vaca. Ballone. Williams, Matteo, Van Bramer, here. Speaker Mark Viverito. Quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Pastor Janet Hodge Sr., the pastor at Crawford Memorial United Methodist Church in the great borough of the Bronx. Quiet in the chambers. Spirit of love, we gather in this place set aside for the work of those elected to serve. May they serve in the strength of mutual care, in the power of unity that comes from wisdom, understanding, and patience. May every bitter thought and nagging worry be erased by loving desires and gentle inspiration consumed by the sense of privilege to serve. We pray for our city that the needs of all for food and shelter and work, for justice and dignity might be met. For the diverse people living here, 
May we all join the efforts to seek the good of all. May vision and hope for the future be clear and all-inclusive, filled with compassion as we move with purpose towards goals and objectives. May their leadership be strong, one that witnesses to bring in unity, peace, and equality. Let them be role models for the young and delight to those whose vision with age is now dimming. May each have the strength to do right, to do good, and to seek justice. Help us all to serve each other with integrity in word and deed. We are thankful for their willingness to give of themselves, for their commitment to preparing the way to a better future for the city, thus the nation and the world. Help us to be supportive that we may show gratitude just as quickly as we are to show contempt. Spirit of love, be with each member of this council on this journey. For the work is not easy and sometimes the journey will be lonely. And sometimes it will seem thankless. Yet we know that this work is a special privilege. In those difficult times, renew in them the desire and passion for the people that move them to serve. Surround them in their homes, their offices, their coming in and going out with the support that they need to keep true to the task that is set before them. For indeed, they are servants of the people. Amen. 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 Please be seated. A motion to spread the invocation upon the record. Council Member Andy King. Shh. Good afternoon, all. Thank you so much, Madam Public Advocate for the opportunity to spread the invocation upon the record and acknowledge Pastor Janet Hodge of Crawford Memorial United Methodist Church in the William Bridge section of the North Bronx in the 12th District. You know, the greatness of Pastor Hodge as a lay person, Janet was a member of Crawford Methodist Church where she served as various ministries and as while she was nurtured in this faith, she was called and ordained to this ministry and she's now the founder of Crawford Saturday morning breakfast program for the needing. We are so happy that she came home to lead this path and, and lead as a pastor of this important congregation for 165 years. In addition to our ministry, the past our pastor has has a successful career, 25 year career in business management. Uh, pastor has received her Bachelor of Science degree from the College of New Rochelle and a Masters of Divinity from Drew University and currently studying for a doctorate at Harford Seminary. Also, I'd like to just add in closing that for the past two years being the uh, pastor of this church, she has stepped forward as a sister from the island of Totola and the British British Islands to do all that she can for all of our brothers and sisters who have been struggling during this hurricane season. I want to thank her for her leadership. I want to thank her for her partnership and the drives that we've done in the North Bronx and sending and shipping out materials to our brothers and sisters who are struggling in the British Virgin Islands as well as the United States Virgin Islands. Again, I thank you, Pastor, for your day. I thank you for your blessings. And I thank you for your guidance. And I thank you for your prayers. God bless. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Council Member. And thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Adoption of minutes, Council Member Chin. Those in the balcony, I would ask that you would have a seat before the Sergeant of Arms uh, escorts you to the exit. All right, we thank you for being here with us today, but we do have to move the agenda, so we're going to ask if you are going to continue to sing, that we're going to have to ask you to leave the, the chamber. All right, so we can clear the chamber, please. I appreciate it.
Thank you. Thank you. Adoption of minutes, Council Member Chin. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of September 27, 2017 be adopted as printed. Thank you. May we have quiet in the chambers, please. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. As we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Riverito. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate, and buenas tardes, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, kicking off today, just wanted to announce that the council uh, released earlier today its legislative API, which is a platform to provide the public with a direct source from which to pull data for applications and other civic engagement tools. This method offers the most up-to-date information and was a key goal in my Council 2.0 technology roadmap to increase access and transparency in government. This has been a crucial next step in increasing access and transparency for this institution, and I want to thank our incredible Public Tech and Digital Strategy Division and Council Members Kalos and Lander for moving this important effort forward, as well as advocates from the civic technology community such as BETA NYC, uh, Council Matic, and Par Participatory Politics Foundation for their support. So thank you for that. Yay! Ben's very happy. <laughs> All right, on a more somber note, our last stated meeting had the distinction of being overlapped by a tragic and horrifying attack of terror just blocks away. Our city lost eight visitors and residents on October 31st, including Belgian citizen Anne Laurie Decat, Argentinian friends Hernan Diego Mendoza, Diego Enrique Angelini, Alejandro Damian Pagnucho, Ariel Erlich, y Hernan Ferrucci, New Yorker Nicolas Cleves, and New Jersey resident Darren Drake. Our thoughts are with their families and friends during this trying time. We want to thank the first responders who were on the scene within minutes and whose quick actions saved countless additional lives from being senselessly, senselessly taken. However, only days later, our nation experienced another incident of historic loss with a mass shooting at Sutherland Springs, Texas, the deadliest mass shooting by an individual ever to take place in the state with 26 lives lost, and we just, I think, had another one recently. It's just never-ending, and we just cannot get action from this Congress, and it is just um, deplorable and, and just unacceptable. So I want to ask everyone to join me and rise in a moment of silence to honor all these individuals here and across the country who were unfortunately touched by all of these tragic events. All rise. Thank you, my colleagues. Jumping um, into our docket today, the council will begin by voting on the rezoning of three Livonia Place in the Brownsville neighborhood of Brooklyn to allow for the development of a nonprofit supportive housing facility. Next, the council will vote on introduction 1722A, which I sponsored, which would amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to providing notice to class two property owners about registration of rent stabilized units and housing affordability programs. 
Anything we can do to improve the quality and availability of affordable housing options in the city is a move in the right direction. So I want to thank my colleagues for their support on this item and look forward to its vote. Moving on, the council will vote on intros 1528A and 1707A, both sponsored by Technology Committee Chair Jimmy Vaca, which would update the open data law and extend the time do it and the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics have to submit their annual compliance plan. I want to thank on staff uh, Malaika, Jabali, Patrick Mulvihill, and Sebastian Baki. As we move closer to our goal of cutting greenhouse gas emissions in New York City 80% by 2050, the Council will be voting Thank on introduction 1637A, sponsored by Council Member Corey Johnson, which will create a long-term energy plan in 2019 and every four years thereafter, and establish a City Energy Policy Advisory Subcommittee of the City's Sustainability Advisory Board. I want to thank Samara Swanston, Nadia, Nadia Johnson, John Seltzer, and Jen Wilcox. I mean, received multiple reports in recent years of residents affected by waterborne illnesses from contaminated tanks. The Council will be voting on intro 657A, sponsored by Council Member Dan Gorodnik, which would codify in the Administrative Code the submission requirement that currently exists in the Health Code and require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to post documentation of annual inspections on its website and the City's open data portal. Department of Health and Mental Hygiene would also be required to provide guidance on its site to assist users in determining whether a building is required to have a water tank inspection and to post information on how to submit a complaint about a water tank or water from a water tank to the department. I want to thank Zia Manoahelu, David Seitzer, Crystal Pond, Terza Nasser, and Andrea Vasquez. Shh. And looking to build upon the initial goals of the Vision Zero program, the Council will be voting on three items to enhance traffic safety around our city. Intro 1116A, sponsored by Majority Leader Jamie Van Bramer, would codify the Vision Zero View Portal in the Administrative Code and require the Commissioner of Transportation to publish a map showing the approximate locations of motor vehicle-related injuries and fatalities in the city in a manner that allows users to disaggregate crash data by year, month, and time of day of occurrence. Additionally, this bill would require the Commissioner to publish summaries of recent design improvements that the Department of Transportation has made to city streets for the purpose of enhancing motorist, passenger, cyclist, or pedestrian safety. Intro 1257A, also sponsored by Majority Leader Van Bramer, would require the Department of Transportation to develop strategies for enhancing pedestrian and traffic safety near schools in the city and to provide a report on a biennial basis describing such strategies, including information on whether the safety strategies have been implemented and their implementation status. And finally, intro 1463A, sponsored by Transportation Committee Chair Idani Rodriguez. Could we please quiet down? The speaker is in the middle of the calendar. Thank you. Uh, which would require the city to establish an alert system to notify the public and media of hit and run incidents resulting in serious injury or fatality in order to assist in the identification of drivers responsible for these incidents. I want to thank Sylvester Yavana, Kelly Taylor, Malak Nasseruddin, not Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Teresa Nasser, and Andrea Vasquez. Continuing our work to, uh, to, open our, to open democratic participation to all eligible residents, the Council will vote on Intro 508A, sponsored by Governmental Ops Chair Pen Kalos, which would require the Campaign Finance Board to create a website and mobile application that allows individuals to complete voter registration forms online. I want to thank Brad Reed, Elizabeth Cronk, Zachary Harris, and Rachel Cordero. In an intimate relationship, both partners should feel safe in the knowledge that sexual photos or videos they may have shared with each other will never be made public without their consent. Unfortunately, as the technology to easily share photographs and videos expands, we are hearing more and more stories of people maliciously distributing intimate photos or videos as a means of punishing a current or former partner. This is commonly referred to as revenge porn, and unfortunately, it is entirely legal under state and federal law. Here in New York City, we are proud to be taking a stand on this widespread and abhorrent practice. Intro 1267A, sponsored by Councilmember Rory Lansman, would prohibit the non-consensual distribution of sexually explicit videos or images, commonly known as revenge porn, of another person with the intent to cause harm to the individual depicted in such videos or images. The bill would also prohibit any legitimate threats to do so and create both a criminal penalty and a civil cause of action. I want to thank Beth Golub, Deepa Ambakar, David Seitzer, Brian Crow, and Robert Calandra. 
City employees and contractors interact with millions of residents each year from providing services and benefits to processing professional licenses. New Yorkers give their information to the city with the expectation that it will be kept confidential and only used for their benefit. While the vast amount of information the city uses can help in providing better and more efficient services, it can also create serious potential for misuse, including improper disclosures and needless collection or retention. First announced during my 2017 State of the City Address, the following legislative items would go far in placing safeguards on the information collected and disclosed by city agencies. Intro 1557A, which I sponsored, would require every city agency to report on their data collection, retention, and disclosure policies and current practices. It would also establish a chief privacy officer and interagency committee charged with review uh, those reports and developing new and detailed protocols for protecting identifying information. An introduction 1588A, sponsored by myself and Council Member Jamani Williams, which would require city employees and contractors to protect all identifying information, including contact information, sexual orientation, religion, and immigration status, by limiting its collection, disclosure, and retention, except where required by law. Requests for the collection or disclosure of identifying information will be processed by a newly established privacy officer within each agency who would analyze whether the collection or disclosure would further the purpose or mission of the agency. Related to our mission to protect New Yorkers as they seek city services, the Council will be voting on Introduction 5079A, sponsored by myself and Carlos Menchaca, uh, which would restrict access to non-public areas of city property as well as locations where human services contractors provide services, unless the purpose of the access meets certain criteria. Taken together, these three bills represent an excellent opportunity to further ensure the safety and protection of our residents and their information. So I want to thank my fellow council members for their collaboration on these items. I want to um, we'll hear from them in a minute. I want to thank Indiana Porta and Jin Lee. Uh, that completes the highlights of our docket. Um, I do want to take a moment and again thank all of those council members that did um, take time to go to Puerto Rico on the delegation and provide supplies and water filters and we made deep uh, lasting contacts with organizations doing incredible work that we're hoping that we will continue to build on that partnership moving forward. Um, so again that really means a lot to me and, and to the island as well that continued um, partnership so I appreciate that. So I want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving holiday. Look forward to proceeding with today's votes. Uh, and with that, and communication from the speaker. Thank you. Discussion of general orders, beginning with um, Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker, my colleague, for all your support that you are giving to me today as we are voting the hit and run alert. Today we'll be voting on intros 1463, the Jim Paul Guerrero, bill which will require the city to create an alert system similar to the Amber Alert to notify the public of hit and run crashes. With this, we're going to be following Los Angeles, San Francisco, and now Philadelphia, who is also trying to install similar hit and run alerts. During the fiscal year of 2016, a total of 44,865 hit and runs were reported, and only 510 arrests were made. This year hasn't been the exception. From January 10, from January to September 2017, 42 hit and runs resulting in critical injury were reported. From the data provided through the end of September, only 18 hit and runs arrests have been made. Using technology already available to us to make New Yorkers aware of hit and run crashes that resulted in severe physical harm or death will make all New Yorkers and visitors a resource for the NYPD in finding the suspect. Hit and run is an epidemic that we can eradicate. Today we are also voting on two more bills that I had the opportunity to be co prime with my a, a great friend, Majority Le a Leader Van Bremer, which aim to strengthen Vision Zero goals. I thank my staff, Jose Luis, Estefan Emiliano, and Jennifer Martinez, and the Transportation Committee staff, Malak, Jonathan, and Emily. With that, muchas gracias, y si se puede. Thank you. Council Member Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. This week, over 15,000 scientists from 184 countries joined together to issue an urgent warning to humanity about climate change. 
This notice was issued on the 25th anniversary of the 1992 World Scientist Warning to Humanity, which called on humankind to take urgent action before it is too late. As a coastal city, New York City is in the crosshairs of this crisis, and it is incumbent upon us to lead. Mayor de Blasio and our environment. We apologize, Council Member. May we have quiet in the chambers, please? Thank you. Mayor de Blasio and our Environmental Protection Committee Chair Costa Constantinides have been leading the way in setting renewable energy goals for our city. We can complement these existing efforts by bringing together a wide range of key public and private stakeholders on a new city energy policy task force. My bill would bring together a task force that would work with our city agencies to create a long-term energy plan for achieving the clean energy goals set by the de Blasio administration. This plan, which would be updated every four years, would include a review of the current en energy supply, a summary of current citywide energy demand, and a projection of future citywide energy demand over the next four years. The plan would also include an estimate of renewable energy sources integrated into the energy supply, an accounting of energy efficiency measures that have been deployed in the city, and specific recommendations of renewable energy sources and energy efficiency measures that could feasibly be developed and integrated by the city. These steps are necessary for the future of New York. I'd like to thank Speaker Mark Viverito and Environmental Protection Chair Constantinides for their leadership on this bill, my colleagues who have lent their support to this legislation, and all those working every day both in the public and private sectors to make our city cleaner, more efficient, and more sustainable for generations of New Yorkers to come. I ask my colleagues to please vote in favor of this piece of legislation. Thank you. Councilmember Van Bramer. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, four years ago, right around this time, an eight-year-old boy named Noshad Nahian was uh, run over by a truck uh, crossing the street to get to school at PS 152 in Woodside. His 11-year-old sister was holding his hand at the time. Uh, we vowed then to make sure that our schools were safe places. Uh, and today, Intro 1257, the Safe Routes to School Act, uh, will be passed. Uh, this is incredibly important and will require the DOT to identify uh, 50 schools uh, that are the most dangerous, where there is the most uh, highest propensity for crashes, uh, injuries, and even fatalities, and then to come up with a plan to make those routes to school safer. It is absolutely essential uh, that we save uh, the lives of children and that we don't have any more uh, tragedies like that of Noshat Nahian. I was there with his mother at the vigil a few days after he was killed, uh, and I never want to see another mother in the pain that Noshad Nahian's mother was in uh, after he was killed on Northern Boulevard in Woodside. Uh, I'm also uh, proud that we're passing Intro 1116, uh, which will codify and strengthen uh, the Vision Zero portal, making sure that New Yorkers can see where crashes are happening in their neighborhoods, when they're happening, what are the most dangerous intersections. Uh, transparency is key to making uh, our streets safer as well. So I want to thank uh, the speaker and the transportation chair uh, for working with us on these two very important Vision Zero bills. Uh, thank my staff, Matt Wallace and Andres Vija, uh, for working on these issues as well. Uh, and may the memory of Noshad Nahian uh, be a blessing for all of us. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Council Member Munchaka. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Public Advocate. And I am rising to talk about Intro 1579A. Our communities are stronger when all residents feel safe and secure while seeking assistance. Uh, Intro 1579A will benefit all New Yorkers, no matter their race, their religion, their gender identity, nationality, or immigrant status. Protecting on public areas of city property, on city property will create a greater incentive for every New Yorker to access basic benefits, to report crimes in their communities, and to preserve their health and well-being. We will preserve public safety and protect New York City residents from non-local law enforcement when they are interacting with city government. You see, New York City is a sanctuary city, and my city council colleagues and I, led by our speaker, are fully committed to protecting our residents. 
Recent enforcement actions targeting immigrants in sensitive locations have been aggressive and have harmed residents' confidence in public institution and therefore harming our ability to have public safety. In our city, we protect our institutions and we preserve the right, we preserve public trust in local government and local law enforcement. Everything we do every day is about building trust with communities. This bill extends that. And so I want to say thank you to the speaker, Indiana Porta, um, and the rest of the city uh, ledge staff that helped make this happen today. And I encourage all our colleagues to vote yes on that bill and the rest of the package uh, that you heard today. Thank you. Council Member Kalos. Thank you. I, speaking about introduction uh, 1692, uh, legislation I've been able to work with uh, land use chair David Greenfield on. Uh, we've been focused on privately owned public spaces. Spaces. There's 538 of them in the city attached to 329 buildings. Uh, buildings got to be taller because of these spaces, uh, but oftentimes they don't offer the amenities that were promised. Uh, in earlier this year in Local Law 116, we started the process of uh, regulating them and requiring signs, and uh, this finishes that process uh, by adding penalties of $4,000 for the first offense and $10,000 dollars for subsequent offenses, so banned landlords will actually have to pay. In November, we uh, had another election, and with every election, New York City hits a new low for voter turnout. Uh, earlier this month, just 21 percent of eligible voters cast a ballot, leaving the city near the bottom of national lists for voter turnout. I think it's high time for the city of New York to join the 20th century now that it's the 21st century, joining, joining 36 states and the District of Columbia uh, in adopting online voter registration where folks could use their phones, their fingers, stylus, or even a picture of their signature to register to vote. Folks would be able to use apps like Facebook, Uber, Seamless, you name it, to register to vote. This is based on the work of New York State Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, who issued an opinion stating that municipalities such as ours could have online voter registration forms where things could be completed online, and then we could then print out the voter registration form and deliver it to the Board of Elections. I'd like to thank the uh, speaker for her support in this initiative, as well as the committee team, Brad Reed, our counsel, Elizabeth Kronk, our analyst, Zach Harris, our finance analyst, and my legislative director, Paul Westrick. Uh, also, I just want to take my last five seconds to thank uh, a number of the members who have been advocating with commissioners and others in the Board of Elections to try to make sure this happens. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes discussion of general orders. Report of, report of special committees? None. Well, excuse me. I'm sorry. Council Member Gorodnik, we apologize. Thank you. That's quite all right. And thank you uh, for the opportunity. I, I'm pleased that the Council today is going to vote on Intro 657A, a bill that will help to ensure that our drinking water is safe. Water tanks are an essential element of New York City's water infrastructure. For many residential buildings, they literally hold our drinking water, and therefore, it is critical for the public to understand their condition. Yet for many years, it was actually impossible for a member of the public to find out whether the water tank providing water to their family was meeting basic maintenance requirements. In fact, you couldn't even get a water tank inspection if you got a subpoena to get one. That is why I passed a bill back in 2009 that gave building residents access to this vital information, proof that inspections were actually done, and what the results were. Nevertheless, over time, investigations by the Department of Health and the New York Times found that few buildings were actually having their water tanks inspection. Even when water tanks were being inspected, those buildings were largely not posting the required notice to tenants that the inspection results were available. The system was still broken. This law will codify a requirement for buildings to submit annual water tank inspection results to the Department of Health. It will require that the department post these results to its website and provide guidance to site users about whether a building is required to have the inspection, how to find historical inspection data, and how to file a complaint. It also requires that the department post this information to the city's open data portal, which will better allow the public to access the information. Finally, our bill will require the Department of Health to submit annual reports on water tank inspections to the council so we can better track compliance ourselves. This bill will make it easy for anyone, anywhere, at any time, to check that their water source has been inspected, when it was inspected, and what the results were. And it will make it easy to know how to complain if there's a problem. 
With this greater openness, we can together make sure that the water coming out of our taps is as clean as we expect it to be. I want to thank the Health Committee Chair, Corey Johnson, for moving the bill, as well as to all the staff, and I ask my colleagues to vote in support. Thank you very much. Thank you. I apologize, Speaker. Councilmember Landsman. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, Intro 1267 to create criminal, uh, creates criminal and civil penalties for the non-consensual distribution of sexually explicit images, commonly known as revenge porn. This is the kind of legislation that shouldn't be necessary, but is. No one should ever have to worry that intimate images might be shared without their consent with their family, friends, employer, or strangers on the internet. Yet more and more women, and occasionally men, have had their most private photos and videos shared publicly without their consent in an attempt to traumatize, humiliate, or punish them. Indeed, domestic abusers are increasingly using the threat of sharing such images to coerce and manipulate victims to stay in a dangerous relationship, to cede custody of shared children, or as yet another means to shame and terrorize their partners. As domestic violence offenses have risen in New York City, this bill is another way to protect vis victims from real and long-lasting harm. This bill allows prosecutors to criminally punish those who intend to cause harm by sharing or threatening to share intimate images with up to a year in prison. Civil courts will also be able to award damages, prevent images from being posted, or order them taken down, and force offenders to pay victims' attorneys' fees. Today's vote sets the stage for New York City to become one of the largest jurisdictions in the country to criminalize revenge porn. Over the course of this process, we have worked with the victims and their advocates, district attorney's offices, the NYPD, and private attorneys to be able to tell any perpetrator who thought that they can get away with this kind of conduct, not in New York City. I'd like to thank uh, Vanessa Gibson, Chair of the Committee on Public Safety, as well as Brian Crow and Deepa Ambakar, who work so hard on this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing none other, report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, intro 1637A, Energy Pol Policy Subcommittee. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, intro 1673A, Recording of Real Estate Instruments. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1722A, Notice to Class II Property Owners. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered intro 1763, exemption for veterans. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered reso 1713 through preconsidered reso 1715, adjusted base proportion and tax resolution. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 813 in reso 1718 and preconsidered LU 814 in reso 1719, tax exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on, on Governmental Operations, intro 508A, voter registration. Uh, amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Health, intro 657A, water tank in inspections. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Immigration, intro 1557A, 1579A, 1588A, handling of identifying information and access to city property. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, intro 1692A, technical corrections to local law 116. Amended and coupled on general orders. LU 784 and Reso 1720, special permit. Coupled on general orders. LU 787 and LU 788, zoning amendments. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me, LU 789 and Reso 1721, sidewalk cafe. Uh, coupled on general orders. LU 791 and Reso 1722, property acquisition. Coupled on general orders. LU 792 and Reso 1723 through LU 795 and Reso 1726, various applications, Council District 41. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 815 and Reso 1727, landmark designation. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety. Intro 1267A, prohibiting disclosures of intimate images. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Technology, intro 1528A, public data sets. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1707A, amending open data standards. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intro 1116A, mapping motor vehicle related injuries. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1257A, school safety report.
Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1463A, public notification of a hit and run incidents. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. General order, I'm sorry, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders, as per roll call vote. I'm asking for a roll call vote on all <coughs> general order items. Can we begin with Council Member Cohen? Shh. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I vote aye on all items of general orders. Thank you. Borelli. I and all accept pre-considered Reso 1713, 1714, 1715, and intros 1557, 1579, and 1588. Thank you. Cabrera. I and all. Chin. Uh, permission to exploit my vote? Yes. Well, first I wanted to congratulate all my colleagues on passing important uh, legislation today and on a personal note I wanted to thank all my colleagues for your support help warm wishes in my re-election campaign thank you I vote aye on all thank you Constantinidis Madam Public Advocate may be allowed to explain my vote yes I just want to congratulate all my colleagues on uh, the passage of bills today in particular I want to single out uh, Councilmember Johnson for intro 1637a relating to an energy policy advisory subcommittee as we look to reduce our emissions 80% by 2050, uh, we need to identify renewable energy sources and how they will work in New York City. And then secondly, I want to congratulate Councilmember Kalos on online voter registration, an issue that uh, he and I have worked on together uh, for over 10 years as uh, young attorneys and now being in the council, I'm proud to vote aye today. Uh, so uh, uh, aye on all. Thank you. Cornegie. Cornegie. Uh, <laughs> a vote aye? Yes, you do. <laughs> Crowley. I vote aye on all. Deutsch. Aye on all. Ferreris Copeland. I vote aye on all. Drum. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Espinal. I vote aye on all. Well, congratulations to my colleagues, especially Ben Kalos. Thank you. Eugene. I vote aye. Gradnik. Aye. Gentili. I vote aye on all with congratulations to all. Gibson. I vote aye on all and with my warmest congratulations to all of our colleagues passing legislation today. Wishing all of you and your families a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving season. May God bless you and keep you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Greenfield. I say amen to Council Member Gibson and I vote aye on all the land use call ups and all items on the general order calendar and happy holidays as well. You have to say it with some soul. <laughs> Maybe Jamani can join me. Can we do a little rendition of Happy Holidays? Come on, ever since you became a speaker candidate, you just haven't had the same. Continuing flair. with the vote. Grodenchik. If it's an assemblyman, he's not an assemblyman yet. If uh, Councilmember Greenfield keeps that up, I'm going to start singing and then no one will be happy. Uh, I just want to uh, congratulate all my colleagues on the bills that they're passing today. I'm especially excited about. Uh, making voter registration easier in the city of New York. I want to uh, ditto to uh, my colleague, Ms. Gibson, and wish everybody a very, very happy and joyful and meaningful Thanksgiving. And remember still that there are many people in this city that do not have enough to eat on Thanksgiving or any day of the week. With that, I vote aye on all. Amen. Johnson. Aye. Kalos. Thank you for all the well wishes and partnerships through the years. I vote aye on all. King. Congratulations to everyone today. Wishing everyone well, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ku. Happy holidays and happy Thanksgiving. I vote aye on all. Kozlowitz. I vote aye and wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. 
Lanceman. Lander. I'm also very enthusiastic about online voter registration, so congratulations, Ben. I want to say thank you to the speaker uh, for the very powerful trip that we had in Puerto Rico and the real extraordinary set of organizations we saw on the ground. The devastation is heartbreaking, but the resilience is even more inspiring, so thank you for organizing the trip. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Yes. Mealy. May I explain my vote? Yes. Shh. Today we are approving uh, affordable and supportive housing development at 3 Livonia. This project will bring 125 units of affordable and supportive housing, all below 60% AMI. When this project first was planned, it was 100% supportive housing and 100% studios. I fought, a hard, I fought hard to make this development more inclusive and diverse by incorporating affordable housing and larger units for families. This project will be approved with units of two, three bedroom apartments for family of supportive and affordable. Overall, this Less than half of this project units will be studios now. I also fought for commercial space and community recreation and culture funding for other developments in the community as part of this project. Breaking Ground also has agreed to pursue a credit union and a ground floor tenant and administration has agreed to provide funding to support the operation of a boxing gym and reinvest in the Brownsville Recreation Dance Studio. This project will now bring affordable and supportive housing and essential community services to this property on Livonia Avenue that has been vacant for decades. I want to thank Uma from the mayor's office. I want to thank my colleague, co-leader Mark Traeger, council member Annabelle Parma, Steve Cohen, and the chairs Raphael Salamanca and David Greenfield in particular for this support. I want to thank Raju and Amy Levitan and Ben Kalos for their support. With all of these improvements that have been made to this proposal, I am now in favor and urge my colleagues, colleagues to do so also. And one thing I do want to say is a slippery slope when we go against one another, so I just thank all my colleagues for being patient and supportive, because we should be a family. How do you vote? I vote aye. Congratulations. Menchaca. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, and congratulate Councilmember Mealy on her victory on land use, uh, her land use victory today, and all my, my colleagues uh, who proposed amazing legislation today, and especially the three uh, 1557 1579 and 1588 uh, package um, that's going to help all New Yorkers. I also want to thank the speaker for leading the contingency, the, 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 the group of council members that went out and saw firsthand the devastation in Puerto Rico. Um, the work that we did there was, was, was small, but it had big impact, not just in the people that we saw every day, the testimonies that we heard every day, um, but in our hearts. And I hope that those Memories will stay with us as we continue to fight for Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and everyone impacted by natural disasters. We are recovering still today from Sandy. Uh, this body continues to lead that effort here in our own backyard. But I will say that I hope this council continues. Uh, the speaker is proud of her heritage, um, where she was born in Puerto Rico. Um, and that is not by accident, it's just who she is. That is the power of the voice that we have here, and I hope that we can continue, and we will continue to fight for Puerto Rico. Um, I also want to thank the mayor uh, and his team. We got to see firsthand the Office of Emergency Management and the Parks Department, uh, who have been there uh, right, since right after the storm. Team 7 just got transitioned in, um, and will be there for the next two weeks, and I hope that we continue to uh, make it a priority for New Yorkers um, who have so many families that are living here um, 
to lift up the voices of Puerto Rico as they continue to, in this humanitarian crisis, recover and, and respond. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mendez. I vote aye. Miller. <clears throat> Miller. Councilmember Miller. Councilmember, yeah, what did you vote aye? Palma. <laughs> Thank you. Perkins. Aye, no. Reynoso. Congratulations to Councilmember Darlene Mealy uh, and her district, and I vote aye, no. Richards. Aye, no. Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Yeah. And I would like to ask permission to vote all, all general order. Yes. Aye. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, congratulations to Council Member Mealy and to Council Member Lanceman um, on intro 1267. Um, I believe that this legislation is protecting the privacy of residents of New York City from what I, I perceive as a hate crime. I want to vote no on preconsidered resolutions 1713, 1714, and 1715, and I on all others, on the others. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. I vote aye on all, and I want to congratulate all my colleagues um, on some really astounding legislation this time around. Councilmember Lanceman um, and Councilmember Kalos in particular. I also want to thank um, the council uh, and um, Councilmember Ferreras Copeland and also the general, the council to the uh, Finance Committee, Eric Bernstein, and my legislative director, Sean Fitzpatrick, for shepherding through my bill that will protect homeowners from having the deed to their property stolen uh, from out under them. And lastly, I want to echo gratitude to our speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, who offered to all council members to join her on a relief mission to Puerto Rico to see towns that. Um, that uh, are, le are, are that have been decimated um, by the hurricane, and who towns that are really being abandoned by the, their government. Um, and so we saw the resiliency of the Puerto Rican people, who are uh, working together uh, to to organize community kitchens working together to um, allow for the distribution of the water filters that we brought and the small uh, solar panels. I, um, I uh, will, I'm, I've already started speaking with members, residents on the Upper West Side to help make sure that we can direct them to um, donate to organizations that are truly getting help to the people of Puerto Rico. And um, I, I want to express again my gratitude to the speaker for giving us the opportunity to join you on that trip. Thank you. <clears throat> Torres. I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Traeger. Uh, with congratulations to my colleagues uh, on their bills, and also another big kudos to my co-chair of the Brooklyn delegation, Councilmember Darley Mealy, for scoring a major victory uh, on the bottom of the ninth inning uh, for her for her district uh, near the near the eleventh hour and near the end of her tenure in this council. Congratulations, colleague. I vote aye on all. Ulrich. I vote aye on all, with the exception of preconsidered Reso 1713, 1714, 1715. And uh, also voting no on intro 1557, 1579, 1588A. Aye on all others. Thank you. Thank you. Vaca. Explain my vote. I'm going to vote aye on all except 1713, 1714, and 1715. 
I vote no on those with the hopes that this will promote a discussion of the need for immediate relief for one and two family homeowners and co-op and condo owners in this city. I'm aware that we have lawsuits and we have task forces and everybody says that the real estate formula for taxation is inappropriate, is terrible, and is really confiscatory. Yet nothing is done. For three years, knowing that we're going to have these lawsuits and long discussions, I have asked that we reinstitute the $400 rebate for homeowners that existed previously because these homeowners have been taxed to the hilt. Small property owners and senior citizens and immigrant families taxed to the hilt. So we are told that this council has never raised the rate. I'm here 12 years. In 12 years, the council raised the rate once. I voted no, but the body raised it once. All the other increases were based on assessments going up. So we say, we never raised the rate. You're getting these bills and you're paying more, but it's not us. No, it's not us, but the people are still paying more. The new council taking office in January, I hope, will fight for that rebate, go to Albany and get the home rule message we need, and finally do something in the interim and not use the pretense of the pending lawsuits and the pending committees that will be formed that's much to do about nothing when it comes to short-term relief that our people are entitled to. Talking about fighting for the middle class, well, talk is over. And I do think now that what we've tried to do here for three to four years has finally got to be done until we have a long-term solution. Thank you. Valone. May everyone have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving and eye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Williams. May I excuse me my vote? Yes. Uh, first, just congratulations to all my colleagues, but particularly Councilmember Mealy on the victory she scored, uh, Councilmember Kalos on an awesome bill, and also Councilmember Lansman on an awesome bill, which I was shocked to understand wasn't even legal, was it, wasn't illegal up until now. So congratulations to them. Uh, on the package of bills that I'm a part of, I want to thank uh, Council, Councilman Menchaca and the Speaker for their help and leadership, and also for Menchaca for painting this uh, rightly as a public safety package when uh, residents and people who live in a community can't trust their uh, government and the agencies, we are all in danger. Uh, we're in a time period now where that fear is pervasive across uh, this country. Uh, so the bill I have will ensure that collection, disclosure, and retention of all identifying information would not be allowed unless it furthers the mission of an agency or it's required by law and it creates the position of a privacy officer to analyze whether the collection or disclosure meets the new standards set forth in the law. In other words, if we don't need it, we won't ask for it, uh, particularly when it comes to uh, information like uh, address, race, religion, employer, and other things that many people are now fearful of. Uh, once again, uh, New York City is leading the way. Uh, this country is now fearful, and my hope is, uh, as we often do, uh, lead the way people see us and they follow. Hopefully they'll do that here. So again, thanks to everyone, including Kelly Taylor uh, and my legislative Director Mike Toomey, and I want to make sure I say happy birthday to Megan Chen from the Housing Committee, whose birthday was yesterday, and Kevin Fagan, my com uh, communication director, whose birthday is today. Thank you. Matteo. Uh, I certainly want to echo uh, the comments of my good friend and colleague, uh, Jimmy Vaca, um, about property tax relief, and, and uh, I, I assure that the, my delegation, the new council, will, will will continue the, the fight and advocate for property tax relief and property tax rebates. Um, so with that, I'm voting no on 1713, 1713, 1714, 1715, also on intros 1557A, 1579, and 1588. I'll be voting no and I and the rest. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Speaker Mark Viverito. Uh, I vote aye on all. I also just want to take a moment. I don't know if they're still here. I know we were joined earlier, or they're still here, by Alika Samuel and Keith Powers. Um, they were here for the member training earlier this week, and I think it's Keith Powers' birthday as well, so welcome to the chamber, and they'll be uh, the newest council members as of January, so thank you for being here with us. And I vote aye on all. <clears throat> okay. 
All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of Resolution 1713, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions, and Resolution 1714, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions, and Resolution 1715, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1557A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1579A. Quiet in the chambers, please. Done. We're still in session. Intro 1579A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions, and Intro 1588A, which is adopted by a, 40, uh, by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. All items are referred to the committee as indicated on the agenda. Um, we have one change in the vote. Council Member Miller? One correction. I vote no on uh, Reso 7. 13, 14, and 15. Welcome to the City Council. Hello. Okay. An amended tally. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47, the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of Resolution 1713, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions, and Reso 1714, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions, and uh, Res 1715, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, six negative, and zero abstentions. Um, now, discussion of resolution. The resolution reads as follows. The resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation to require all real property conveyances to be memorialized by a deed recorded in the office of the clerk of the county where such real property is situated. Anyone willing, uh, wishing to speak on the resolution? Council Member Vallone. Madam Advocate, just real quickly, I want to thank you for uh, the resolution going today. We sponsored this. It's, it's one of those critical situations where many of our seniors and homeowners are unaware that fraud is being perpetuated upon their home. Having this requirement of uh, showing Albany that we stand united to make sure that there is a notice requirement to protect our deeds that are on file and that predators stop using uh, the tactics that they do against our seniors and all our homeowners would be a great step. So I urge everyone to vote aye on this. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Any other members? All of those in favor of this resolution say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. And now, general discussion beginning with Council Member King. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just want to take a moment just to offer a brief message of thanks as we embark on this holy holiday season. As you all recently know, I recently lost my dad, and I want to thank you all again for your kind words and your support to my family during this transition. And of course, you know, the loss of my dad put so many things in life into another perspective. As we gather today, some of us will be leaving soon, some, and we will have some new friends in this building who will be joining the council shortly. And I want to congratulate them and thank them for their commitment to serving our communities. With the election behind us, I want us all to give thanks for the opportunity to serve and to make our constituents who we serve, those who, we need, us, who need us most, our seniors without heat, our parents worrying about lead paint in their apartments, those young people aging out of foster care trying to find their place in the world. I thank you, my colleagues, for your service, and I ask that we all try to keep that spirit of service in our mind, the calling that we have to do the right thing by those who put us in office, and finally, be thankful to our parents, our families, our staffs, our friends, and to all who participate in helping us do this work we do each and every day. So with that, I am grateful, thankful, and I wish everyone a happy holiday. God bless. Thank you. Councilmember-elect Keith Powers, happy birthday. Councilmember King. No, I'm sorry. Councilmember Williams, excuse me. Thank you very much. 
Um, last year, Republican Congressmember Mark Kirk. Excuse me, Council Member. We are still in session. Please keep your conversations to a minimum or take them outside. Thank you. Council Member Williams has the floor. Thank you. Actually, I think it was Republican Senator Mark Kirk was voted out of office for his support of gun control measures. I thought of that and was moved to speak about my colleague, Council Member Liz Crowley. Uh, I know she left today. Uh, but I wanted to honor her for her conviction that she stood uh, in terms of homeless shelters and in terms of uh, closing down Rikers. Uh, it was a, an illumination of how hard it is for some people to do what they do and the courage that it takes. Uh, some of us have to have some more than others. Uh, there were two other Congress members who were voted out several years ago, also in the Republican Party. Uh, and the risk that they take to do the moral what their morals convict them to do. And I think Councilmember Crowley did that, and she should be applauded for that. And I can only imagine if all of us would take those risks. Uh, if we are in a comfort zone, we probably have to push a little further, uh, like Councilmember Crowley did. And I think if we did that, the city would be in a much better place. So I just want to lift her name up today and applaud her courage. Thank you. She is certainly a profile in courage. Councilmember Traeger. Thank you, public advocate. Uh, colleagues, as many of you are aware, a teenage girl was raped by two Brooklyn South narcotics detectives in my district in September. The detectives tried to mount a defense by claiming it was consensual. They have since resigned, but we need strong laws in place to make sure this never happens again. My consent legislation will make it clear that anyone in the custody of a law enforcement official is incapable of giving genuine consent to sexual contact. I commend Kings County District Attorney Eric Gonzalez for moving swiftly to bring charges against these detectives, but the victim in this case is a teenager who will now be forced to relive the trauma of this crime in the public eye. If my bill was already law, the district attorney wouldn't have to prove this was a rape case. There would be no consent defense. In addition to my bill, I'm also introducing a resolution that calls on state lawmakers to amend the state penal code to end the loophole that allowed the detectives to claim that the rape was consensual. There can be no meaningful consent when you are in the custody of a law enforcement officer. State law wisely recognizes that inmates can't give consent to corrections officers and parolees can't give consent to parole officers. All law enforcement officials must be held to the same standard. I want to thank all the advocates public advocate who have already shown so much support, my colleagues who have shown support. I'd like to give, again, a big thanks to public advocate Tish James, who joined me yesterday to show her strong support on this issue. This is just the very beginning of many more necessary conversations we must have regarding the nature of sexual consent and power dynamics. We must make sure our laws are in line with common sense and moral decency. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. And lastly, Council Member Miller. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. <clears throat> Today, I call on my colleagues in the Council to adopt re Resolution 1716, calling on the UN Security Council to urge the, <clears throat> to urge the government of Myanmar to immediately cease the hostile, hostile acts against Rohingya Muslims and permit the safe return of its refugees. Since August, Myanmar security forces have engaged in what the UN Human Rights Commission has described as textbook ethnic cleansing. To the Rakhine state Muslim population, including acts of such of burning villages, mass executions between five and 10,000 infants and families. And as reported yesterday, Human Rights Watch, the systematic sexual assault and rape of women and girls estimated in the hundreds. To date, the UN Security Council has yet to achieve consensus. To date, the UN Security Council has yet to achieve consensus, taking forceful actions to contempt, condemn these atrocities, despite the fact that there is a quote mounting evidence to suggest that these facts are present and genocide certainly exists. The population, according to the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum and the Southeast Asian human rights advocacy groups. The international community's failure to act upon this has led to rapidly 
worsening humanitarian crisis that has compelled more than a half a million Rohingyas to seek refuge in nearby Bangladesh. The situation in Myanmar is dire, and it is imperative that this body, as a matter of principle, take unequivocal stands against these horrors. I want to thank the speaker for her support of this resolution and joining me on this, res on this resolution, Council Members Van Bramer, Constantinides, Lanceman, Menchaka, Barron, and Koo. I urge the rest of the colleagues to sign on as well. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Any other speakers? No. And now to close, the speaker, Melissa Margarito. Well, thank you again to my colleagues. Um, hopefully, I'll see some of you now at 3.30 with the um, alumni, I guess, yes, uh, that are going to be meeting next door, or actually downstairs. Uh, but thank you all, and see you at uh, the next stated. Happy holidays. That we are adjourned. Uh, good. All right, well, let me, let's talk about okay. I'll sign on to this. Excellent. Thank you. And do you know the date, the, um, yeah. the intro number? 1760.